All right, so what I've got right here is my sugar syrup. Um, cooking away here at about medium low heat. Um, so I have it on a, the burner right now. I've got my candy thermometer here set ready to go. And then I just have um, some water here just to kind of brush down the sides of the pan. Now right now it is, it is at 225 degrees, so already beyond the boiling point. So this is already very, very hot. Um, but before I do anything else, take a look at the color. Um, you see it's a little more clear. I know it's a little harder to see with the bubbles, but as we continue to cook this, we're gonna see the color start to change. So what I'm gonna be doing here is, as it's cooking, I'm gonna take a little syrup out and then put it out into each of these plates um, that I have in front of the burner. And I'm gonna show you what each of these syrups looks like. So I'm gonna lower the heat here and I will then cut to when we get to our first stage. All right, so here right now we are at 200 and 25 degrees, a little more than that. So right now, this is what is called the thread stage. Now we haven't really talked about that because it's not really super useful, but if I were to take the syrup and just to kind of pour it onto a plate, it would just form little ribbons, not really useful, not super useful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this syrup, plunge some ice water, and then I'm going to take that out to then show you guys here in a little bit, okay? But for now, I'm just gonna continue cooking the syrup to the softball stage, and once we get there, I will uh, let you guys see that. All right, right now, it's at 235 degrees. So right now, it's at the softball stage. If I were to take some of this syrup out, and just put into some, some cold water. The syrup will come together. And form this kind of squishy, soft ball. Okay, so I'm gonna put this again on the plate here and then I will show you later when this is all done. All right, now that it's at 145 degrees, this is at the firm ball stage. So here will be very similar to the softball stage but should be a little bit stiffer here. Okay, so I'm going to then, so you can see right now, it's not really that big of a change in color, uh, but as we continue to go, the change will be keep getting more drastic. Okay, I'm gonna back off the heat just a little bit here. And next time next time we cut, I'll show you the hard ball stage. Okay, now it is at 255 degrees, so right in between for the hard ball stage. So you can see the color is changing a little bit. It's starting to darken a little bit, but it's not overly dark right now. So right now, I'll take this, carefully ladle that into my container here, and then just spoon a little bit onto the plate. Now the next stage after that is the very oddly named soft crack stage, which is from 270 degrees to 290 degrees. So I'm gonna slowly bring the heat up now because at this point, there's very little water left in the syrup. So the heat's gonna really start to rise here. So I'm gonna back off here. And next I'll show you is the hard crack stage. Okay, now we are at 280 degrees. Starting to get pretty serious here. You can see the color is starting to darken. Now this is where the candy will go from soft and pliable now to something you can break apart. So I'm gonna take a little bit here, pull it right in. And it's probably tough to hear over camera, over the camera here. But the, you can actually hear the 
um, the candy starting to kind of like crackle as it goes into the syrup. So I'm going to take a little bit of this, ladle it right onto the plate that we've got here. And now we go to the hard crack stage. Now, super important here, whenever you're working at the really hot syrup, you do not want to be moving this pan around a lot uh, because since this is super, super hot, you can slosh the syrup onto your skin, which is not fun. I've done that myself. It is really painful. Um, okay, now we're going from 300 to 310. That is our hard crack stage. Again, you can kind of see the color is getting darker and darker. So now, I'm going to take this syrup and I'm going to pour a little bit right into our cold water. And now it's really starting to sizzle when it goes into the water. And I'm going to take a little bit and carefully, very carefully, ladle that onto our plate. All right, now our last step is the caramel phase. So that's from 200, or sorry, 320 degrees to 350 degrees. And this is where our pralines and caramel sauce come from. Okay, now at this stage, you can see the sugar is really starting to brown. It's undergoing that Maillard reaction. Now at this point you can also see there's not really a whole lot of bubbling here because we've boiled out so much of the water that there's not going to really be a whole lot of movement here. Now at this point you do not want to leave this pan, you don't want to really ever leave the pan here, but now this is basically napalm you've created. Um, so do not leave this, do not walk away. Uh, keep an eye on keep an eye on your thermometer right now my thermometer is at 320 degrees but I'm gonna take this just a little bit further a little bit darker start to really build that flavor and then I'll show you what a caramel looks like all right we are at 350 degrees that's really the farthest I'd want to go. At this point, we have a lot of toasted, roasted flavors in here. The Maillard reaction is really dark in this sugar syrup, and this is where you'd have the most flavor. Staying, just kind of staying over it, you can really smell a lot of the kind of slightly burnt notes, but in a pleasant way, all those sorts of uh, flavors and aromas. So now here, if I spoon this, you can see very, very dark, but very hot as well that into my sugar, my beaker here. And now I'm going to very carefully ladle this onto the plate. So again, I'm not gonna really mess with this too much because I do not want to get burned. All right, now let's take a look at each of these candies. Now, the first one here is what is called the thread stage. Now, we didn't really talk about this much in class, but here you can kind of see this candy, this syrup is very, you know, very flexible, very soft, doesn't really, you know, do too much. Uh, just basically is sugar and uh, water boiled together, just slightly beyond the boiling point. Okay, now the thread stage would generally be used to make things such as simple syrup to sweeten things like iced tea, uh, coffee, um, lemonades, things like that. Now, going over to our next stage, you can see that the sugar does darken a little bit for what is the softball stage. Now, in this stage, now here, you can see at the top of each plate, I'm just going to drizzle on a little bit of the um, sugar syrup. And here is what was sitting in that glass beaker um, or the uh, beaker that had the water filled in. So now for this one, let me go ahead and get that focused. Here you can see this the 
soft ball stage the syrup is pretty flexible i can stretch it and pull it now generally speaking this would be used to make things such as fudge or fondant um still tasty very very delicious um but very very simple okay and you can see not really oh let me focus and as you can see not really that dark as far as color so now going from the softball stage, we go a little darker into the firm ball stage. Now in this stage, let me adjust that. Now in this stage, we have our candy. And it still forms a ball that has a tiny bit of give but I really have to press down on this. Um, generally speaking, this would be used to make caramels. Um, if you ever had soft caramel candies, this is the firm ball stage. All right, put that back on the plate. Now we go over to the next one, which is the hard ball stage. So you can see already a little bit darker between the two. That's because we're starting to slowly brown the sugar. We're starting to go through that Maillard reaction. Now, in this case, this is the hardball stage. Now, this one, I'm not even going to bother really squeezing it. It's not going anywhere. Okay, this would be used to make things such as marshmallows. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, Okay, marshmallows aren't really hard. Why would we use a hard ball candy? The difference with marshmallows is that you're using gelatin or egg whites to whip in a lot of air into this syrup. So while yes, it is pretty hard here, when you put in a lot of air, this becomes a lot more flexible. All right, so there is our hard ball stage. Now we go into our first of the brittle candies. So now we go to the soft crack stage. Now, in this case, you can see again, caramel's going, the caramel's getting a little bit darker. Not too much of a difference, but here we notice a big difference with the sugar syrup. Now, whereas the hard ball kind of wanted to form into, into a ball, basically, here this, not so much. It wants to be brittle. It wants to snap. It wants to break. Now, it still has a tiny bit of give um, in here, but generally speaking, um, it is pretty brittle. This would be used to make things such as taffy, nougat, uh, things that are still somewhat soft, but do have a bit of snap to them. Now, we go over to our next one which is the hard crack stage. Now, in this case, you can see the color is starting to change quite drastically. Now, if I pick up this candy, here, you can see it's super brittle. Okay, let me zoom, let me adjust here, perfect. Now here, you can listen to if I crackle it. Ow, actually it's pretty sharp, I probably shouldn't have done that, but here, I can break it apart. Now, this would generally be used to make things such as um, brittles, lollipops, hard candies. That's where you would get your, um, that's the phase that we would use for that. Now we go to our last phase here, which is the caramel stage. Now, as you can see, the change in color is drastic. Where so far we've kind of had a very gradual change, you know, kind of slowly getting darker, slowly getting darker. Now, all of a sudden, the color change is huge. That's because the Maillard reaction that we talked about happens between this range. Um, so if you're ever baking cookies or anything like that, and your oven temperature is below 200 and, or sorry, 350 degrees, you're really not getting the sort of caramelized flavors that you could if you were to have your oven a little bit higher. Um, so uh, next time, if you have a cookie and it's kind of lacking a little in the flavor department, 
up the temperature just a little bit. Now, in this case, you can see the candy is not going anywhere. Now, I do have a little bit of water um, on this still. If I go ahead and zoom in on this, and you can see it's a very beautiful golden brown. And now I do have a little bit of water pulled up from before. Didn't really dry this super well. But here, this would be used to make things such as pralines, caramel sauces, and things like that. Now, this is the farthest I would generally want to take a caramel, a sugar syrup, okay? Um, a great caramel sauce is just to simply take, take sugar at this stage and then pour in some heavy cream and add in a little kosher salt and you've got a caramel sauce. Um, however, if you were to take this and go a little bit further with it, uh, you would get burnt sugar. Uh, generally not the best tasting thing because now all of a sudden the sugar has broken down to a point that you're not creating any more roasted flavors, you're creating burnt bitter flavors. Now, there are some people that do prefer this. If you've ever had a creme brulee, some people like having that really, really dark. Uh, I know personally, for me, I like this sort of dark uh, color on marshmallows. Um, if you ever toasted marshmallows, I personally like lighting them on fire and getting them really, really charred. Uh, but that's just me. Like, I like those kind of really charred, slightly bitter flavors that kind of balance the rest of the sweet marshmallow. Um, but generally speaking, in making candy and sauces, this is way too far. Um, you're not going to really make a really nice pleasant sauce out of this. You're going to develop too many bitter flavors that are not going to be very pleasant to eat. Now, one last thing uh, here um, before um, we move on here. Um, with all of these candies, the problem with them is that they are not only very, very sticky, but they harden up. So the problem is if you have a pot of, say, burnt caramel that you happen to accidentally leave on the stove like I did, how do you clean this up? Well, if you were to use soap and water on this and try to clean this up, it would be way too sticky. You will have one hell of a time trying to clean this up. So what you can do, and my advice, is if you ever burn on sugar or you have a sugar syrup or something, rather than worrying about scrubbing and cleaning the pan right at that moment, put this under, let the pan soak in some soapy water, just a little bit of soapy water overnight. That water will slowly help dissolve and soften the sugar so that in a couple hours or the next day, the sugar should be dissolved, that you can pour a lot of it out, and then there will just be a little bit left in, this, uh, in the pan for you to be able to clean. That's what I'm going to do with this here. I'm not going to waste my time trying to scrub the pan here. Um, but that's it. So from beginning to end, we got the thread stage. Soft ball stage, firm ball stage, hard ball stage, soft crack, hard crack, caramel, and ruined. And that's all of our stages. So remember, if you ever do make a sugar syrup, please remember, be careful. This stuff really, really burns if you get it on your skin. Um, make sure that you have a you know, source of cold water nearby just in case you do because you need to cool it off immediately. All right, so that is it, guys, for our candy demonstration. All right, so one extra thing I'm going to show you today is we showed the different candy stages from thread to caramel stage. Today I'm going to show you how to make a caramel sauce. So what you're going to need, just super simple here, you're just going to need uh, some sugar. I have about four ounces here or half a cup an equal amount of heavy cream, so here in this case four ounces or half a cup, a two ounces or four tablespoons of butter. Now this is optional, but uh, it does add a nice flavor to the caramel. And then just a little bit of water just to dissolve the sugar. You don't really need much here. Also optional, but does really help a lot, um, is some kosher salt. And 
either a little tiny bit of corn syrup or honey. Um, the corn syrup and honey is not necessary, but what can happen when you're boiling sugar is that the sugar can start to crystallize and create a sauce that's more gritty. Um, a little bit of a different type of sugar, such as corn syrup or honey or things like that, will keep that from happening. So to do this, all I'm going to do is just put the sugar in a pan, turn on the heat, and add just enough water to just kind of create almost like wet sand. There we go. Now I'm also going to add just a tiny bit of corn syrup here. Just a little bit. There we go. Should be more. That's more than enough. Again, that corn syrup is there just to keep the sugar from crystallizing. Okay, I'm being super careful not to really slosh the pan around too much because again, hot sugar will burn. So now what I'm gonna do here is if you'd like to put a candy thermometer on, you can. You're gonna be cooking this to the caramel stage or until the sugar starts to develop a nice golden brown color and maybe when you start to see the first hints of a little bit of smoke then you're going to carefully add in your cream so uh, when we come back i'm going to uh, we will be at that stage and uh, show you how easy this is Okay, so now you see the sugar is just starting to caramelize on the edges, so I'm just going to back off of the heat just a little bit, give it a very gentle little swirl, okay. Now you really want to take, you want to take this uh, caramel as far as you possibly can without going to burnt levels. Alright, so. Now, what I've also got here is a pastry brush with a little bit of water. What I'm just going to do, if any sugar kind of sticks to the side here, is I'm just going to kind of brush that away, being very, very careful. You don't have to do this, but it does help um, avoiding crystallization. So here, super important, back off the heat. Okay, this is very, very hot. You don't have to be scared of it, but you do need to respect it. Okay, so now starting to really get golden brown here. Very, very close. Okay, it's almost like a game of chicken. Here. All right, now there I see a few tiny whiffs of smoke. I'm gonna turn off the heat and very carefully add in my cream. Okay, a little bubble. Just gonna stir that together. I'll add in the butter into the sauce. Alright, and, and there we go, a really delicious caramel sauce, so I'm just going to keep stirring this. The heat that was in our caramel is going to more than take care of the butter here, so just letting that swirl in. Now while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to take a good, good three-fingered pinch of kosher salt. Sprinkle that in. Okay, salt and caramel go amazingly well together. Hence why you have salted caramel. Okay. Okay. Okay, butter's almost done melting. All right, 
right now. Once that's dissolved, I would not go and taste this right away. Um, just because it's very, very hot still, you will burn yourself. But here we've got an awesome caramel sauce. That would go great with the angel food cake we made, top ice cream, cheesecake, all sorts of desserts. So there you go. And there is our caramel sauce. So now you know what to do with sugar as far as um, what happens with the different stages of the caramel making process. Sorry, I got a few little bits of candy still that dripped onto the table. Okay, so now you know what to do and you know how to make a really easy, really delicious dessert sauce.